everybody, Coach Carroll here. Uh, just finished speaking at an event uh, here in Detroit, Michigan. My good buddy Keith Kalfas is with me. Um, I don't know, figure we'd shoot a little video and uh, maybe some audio for the podcast. We haven't done any podcast exclusive content, so wanted to do a little something something. I don't know, Keith and I are always on the phone for like two and three hours at a time. So I figured surely we can get 10 to 12 minutes of some fire content from you guys. Um, I don't know what, we want, what we're going to talk about. Maybe internet marketing, maybe business. I don't know what you think. No, no I know. I don't know. I'll talk about consciousness because that's the shit we always get fired up about. And then we don't. We, we, what happens is we'll end a three-hour phone call and we're like, fuck, we should have recorded that every time. And we've done it probably a half a dozen times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I, I guess you probably should tell everybody who you are. That's probably would make more sense. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, what's up? I'm I'm Keith Kelfis, <clears throat> and what what I do is I help uh, fledging fledgling uh, entrepreneurs and guys that are stuck in dead end jobs break free and become their own boss. And I do that through means of social media and get about um, a half a million views per month online across social media channels between my YouTube, which is the landscaping employee trap window cleaning blueprint brands. And then my podcast, the untrap podcast. And I've spoken on stages uh, around the country. And I, a few years ago, I was literally a flat broke dude in his late twenties facing, you know, bankruptcy. I'd gotten sued and I was losing everything. And my life was a total nightmare. And although I'm not where I want to be yet today. Uh, I've shared my journey online through this whole social media vlogging thing. And to my surprise, it's literally helped thousands of people. And to me, I, I feel super humbled. And now I've become obsessed with personal development. And I love talking to people like DJ because he's very like-minded. So like he said, whenever we get on the phone, uh, sometimes I'll be like, okay, you know, if you call this dude, you're like literally about to be on the phone for an hour and a half. And we don't talk that much, literally maybe once every few months. But when we do, we cover so much because he has an angle that I don't and I have an angle that he doesn't. Yeah, it's pretty cool, especially like we started talking about like consciousness stuff. And I'll tell you one of the like one of the first things that probably you helped me out with more than anything was like meditating. So I remember I was living in Carrollton still in the house on Martin Road um, and I was like, I'm just going to try this meditating shit. And I remember when I was little, my dad, like, tried to teach me what meditating was because uh, I remember we were watching Chuck Norris, like, Chuck Norris shows. And, like, he he would meditate. And I was like, what is that? And, like, my dad was like, well, just close your eyes and imagine everything black and there's just one little white dot. Just focus on that. I think that was, like, his version of, like, trying to help me at such a young age. But now it's to the point we were actually driving to Detroit and I've got like the guided meditations on my phone and they started playing and, and Nick was like driving. He's kind of looking at the thing. I was like, yeah, I don't need those anymore because now I can just meditate without them. But like guided meditation. And I remember when I very first started doing that, I would call you and I'm like, bro, I just meditated. Like this shit was fucking weird. And you're like, yeah, man, like you'll get used to it. It's okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll be all right. Like <laughs> I like what you said about how now you can just access that yourself because the ritual is not the state. The map is not the territory, and that's something very important to pay attention to. Uh, and what I mean by that is the ritual that you go through, the ritualistic process to get yourself to a state, an alpha or beta state of consciousness, that of either pure awareness or maybe even a dreamlike euphoric state that allows you to access the deeper answers that your critical mind has stopped and stopping you from getting to, through. Um, the ritual that you take to get there, the state sometimes we can get confused with the ritual being the state such as i need a cigarette or i need to smoke a bong or drink a beer or something to get to that place but there's something called state specific learning if you need uh and i'm not trying to talk about substance here i'm just drawing like a juxtaposition if you need a, a substance or you need a, even meditation to get to that state then you might become dependent on that so you eventually learn how to develop your own toolkit and get rid of the dependence of maybe even a coach or uh, something. And you could just, boom, get there automatically because now you know how to move the things out of the way that are stopping you from being there because being in that state is your natural state. It's all the shit in front of it that's stopping us that we're operating over the top of all the time. We're operating over the top of just well-being and presence. Yeah. 
And that's, you know, like, I, I, and that the, the ritual thing that you're talking about is like, you know, when I would have to listen to the podcast and it's like, okay, close your eyes, focus on your breathing, you're driving fill shit. your knees, fill your thighs, like becoming aware of your body, like stuff like that. And, you know, I, I talked about it today when I was speaking and I had a guy come up and, and introduce himself to me afterwards. And he goes, DJ, you know, you, you've really helped me. And I, I always look like we got sales excellence university. Like I always look at myself as like the sales coach, right? Like teach people how to sell. I even believe that sales is personal development because it's communication skills. But this guy comes up and he's like, dude, you've really helped me with my mindset, my whole mindset around business. And I was like, yo, like that's, that's the trick. Like if I can help people on that level, then you're like, I don't know, man. I started meditating, and and I think that's where self awareness comes from. Like, if you're gonna figure out who you are, what makes you tick, what makes you, what ticks you off, what you want out of life, I think it has. You have to go through that journey of learning how to meditate and just being able to to, because that's to me, meditation is controlling your emotions. Like it's putting yourself in that place. You're hitting the nail on the head <laughs> right now, because you're asking the question behind the question and you're going meta because you always wonder why you know i'm not saying we're, we're not we're not millionaires obviously but i've i've had the opportunity so. oh well <laughs> teach me some tricks so i'm trying to be a millionaire i'm sorry for real I, I always like to just be like really realistic even if it seems like i'm i'm um I guess when I talk about myself, I like to say where I'm realistically at because I like to be relatable. It's just so important to express and show stuff like that. Uh, if I, I, I was in opportunities, you get to be around a group of millionaires and sitting around smoking cigars. If you pay, pay attention to maybe what they're talking to, sometimes they'll be talking about things not related at all to what somebody who wants to uh, get money would be talking about. You're like, what the fuck does that have to do with getting money? I want to <laughs> shut up about the meditation. I want to get the money. Where's the money? Give me the tricks to get the money. Yeah. But the funny thing is, if you actually go upstream, it all starts with consciousness Yeah. and being calibrated. It's like you put the ball in the thing and it falls down and out comes the money, the tickets. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't Plinko. sit there and say, give me the tickets. Yeah. You got to put the ball in the thing. Can't play Plinko without the actual little thing that you put in the top. And that's your mind. Yeah. I, I just think that I think it's something that's not talked about enough in the business world, right? It's it's Lamborghinis and Ferraris and check out my big house and here's this and that. But like, there's there's very few people that in the personal development space or in business and money that talk about like it starts with you. Like you got to get your shit straight first before you can worry about getting your money straight. Because like, if you still have I call them broke bitch mentalities. Like if you got broke broke bitch mentalities in your mind. You're going to do like, I mean, in my early 20s, I was making money, but then I would go blow seven, eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars at the casino like it was nothing. And, and not understanding that that was a thousand dollars that if I would have reinvested that in my business six months down the road, that would have popped out 10, 15, 50, 100 thousand dollars. But instead, I was just blowing it at the casino. Um, yeah, my uh, Bradley says, you know, you'll spend more money trying to make somebody think you've got money. Than if you just put it in your pocket, it's so like just, true. Just keep making your own money. Don't worry about trying to flash it for other people. Yeah, <laughs> being low key and stuff like that. So important. And the, and the wealthiest people that I know are like that. Herb Kimman was one of my great mentors, man. And, and unfortunately, I only got to learn from him for like three years, and he passed away. He owned a Chevy dealership. But you would always say, you know, like I'm like Herb, how's it? Oh, just trying to get by, DJ. Trying to get, you know, loaded millions, and millions of dollars. Low key. He wanted. He always told me. He said, I want everybody to think I'm the dumbest guy in the room. Yes. Because those are the ones that no one's expecting. So smart. <laughs> and I need to hear stuff like that, too. Because I try to sound like I'm smart to people all the time. Because I have a huge insecurity of uh, if people think I'm stupid. So we overcompensate of things in our lives. And, and you could, we could be caught up, get caught up in a bad habit of running after money so we can get things, so we can look like we're successful. Because maybe inside we don't feel like we are. Yeah. So that's where meditation, again, and breathing and getting centered here's something you ever wanted to uh, spend money on something because you thought that thing would get you a feeling or get you something and you become obsessed and infatuated with it and if you actually stop yourself you realize you don't even need that thing at all you can feel great right now 
and that would have taken you down a rabbit hole or something or blue money or finance mm-hmm. something and and that's where the ritual is not the state and through meditation you can get that like that yeah so what's so let's do um because you know i want to be actionable that's like my big thing with the sales factory there's a lot of podcasts there's a lot of youtube channels that like talk about the fluff but they don't give actionable stuff so um i'll go first first thing i think when you when you're going to meditate is you have to be in a place where there's zero distractions Dude, you're like a psychic <laughs> <laughs> now you know now like i could you know there could be ambiance noises and stuff like that now because i've trained myself to be able to identify and then close them out but in the beginning your mind's not strong enough to be able to handle that so you need to be somewhere that's like dark quiet you don't have to be anywhere in the next 35 45 minutes like there's no rush dinner's not on the stove like you need to have time and be in this quiet place where you're like you literally can just completely escape step number one so what's step number two that's so good Uh, (laughs) uh, and i think uh the next step would be god that was so good identification uh with with your environment a monk can meditate on the side of a mountain where it's nice and quiet (laughs) if you take that same monk and you throw him in a bar fight or you take him where his wife's screaming at him (laughs) or you or you put him in 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 a situation where he's being tried that's the best place to meditate eventually transition over to meditate amongst the chaos of the moment can we divorce ourselves from the chaos of the moment while it's happening in real time, objectify, identify, then go in and execute. So step two is the modality of the actual meditation, and that is actually uh, getting yourself in that position and doing it whether you feel like it or not. So, yeah, I think it's good. And then it, breathing, uh, it would be another tip. Like, and that's the thing. I I well, remember because like, the trigger will come off when you start to feel overwhelmed. Or you feel I need to meditate. Yes. Yeah, and okay. and you'll my 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 biggest thing too was when I meditated for the first time and I got done, I felt weird, and that's like while I like that's why I reached out to Keith and I was like, hey bro, like is this how this shit's supposed to work? Cause like I feel like I don't know, like you when you get a really long night's rest and you wake up and it's like I'm not tired, I don't need to go back to sleep. Like I, it just refreshes you, and and literally so like you you close yourself out. You, you block out the external environments and then you close your eyes and what I've always done is just focused on my breathing. And, and whether you get to a state or not, if you can just spend 15 minutes quiet, just focused on your breathing, you'll come out the other side completely different, I think. Absolutely. Just be, because you'll be so much like the calmness that comes from that, I think. I don't, I don't know. It's, it's weird. I just, I, I want you guys to try it, um, it because like the consciousness side of business is something that's not talked about a lot. It's, it's always that money. It's the hustle. It's the grind. And I mean, I get it. Like I'm, I tell you guys like hustle. It's worth it and all that kind of stuff. But you have to realize like you got to take care of yourself too, because if you're not, if you're, if you, if this thing up here is not operating at, at peak potential you'll never get to the money long term. You might find something that's a flash in the pan and you make quick money, but as fast as you make it, it'll be gone. I want you to build long-term wealth. I want you to build something that's sustainable that you can take care of your family and, and live out your goals and your dreams with. Um, I don't know, man. This. <laughs> yeah. I'm tuned in everything you're saying. I'm like, when you're talking, I feel like I'm watching a movie. <laughs> So, so let's, let's do, let's do this real quick before we wrap this up. Um, what do you think is the biggest challenge about, so we'll do two, we'll do starting a small business. Wait, can, can I really quick yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, insert ahead. something and we'll get to that? Yeah. I'm not trying to, no. can I show them uh, just a quick, how to meditate real quick, how to Perfect. actually do yes. it? Yes. Um, Cause sometimes I'll watch a podcast video and they They'll like get me all, oh yeah, oh my God, I'm gonna get the cheese. And then I never get the, the cheese, man. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, you let's know. give them the cheese. <laughs> okay, so the whole point, you have the, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. The system, sympathetic nervous system would be uh, the brain, the part of you that goes into fight or flight mode. The When you feel like you're ready to fight and freak out or you're gonna run or you're scared. or The part of you, the entity that takes over you and starts running your ass like a puppet and now 
it's driving while you're sitting in the passenger seat looking out the window. Um, so objectifying that demon is to actually um, get out of the sympathetic nervous system the, the and get back into the uh, the autonomic uh, the processes of your body that's what it, what is it? Your brain is sending signals to your heart to beat to pump blood follow follow with me and then your lungs are moving and the blood's flowing and your organs are still working. And, but you're shutting off all conscious processes that are running, like your brain, your mind, your thoughts. Shutting off your thoughts. And it's like pulling the plug out, so now that all it is, it's a body, this is kind of morbid, but it's just a body breathing. Like if somebody pulled your mind out and it was just a body with no soul, I know it sounds weird, and the chest was moving up and down, that'd be really weird because the person would be lying there completely disassociated so take a deep breath right now deep deep diaphragmatic breath and at the top of the breath hold for two seconds one two and then exhale all the way out and at the bottom of the breath exhale and, and count two seconds one two breathe in hold And with each next breath, continue. You're letting go. You're relaxing. You're dropping into a deep state of relaxation. And when you can shut off the concert of your thoughts, let the sand settle, you get to a plate of pure awareness, which is an alpha state. By paying attention to the breathing you're overriding the autonomic process and now you're focusing because it's connected to your life right and when you do that you realize that everything in this moment is is perfect and you can get all the answers to anything you are seeking. It literally just falls in your fucking lap. You go, oh, it's obvious. I'm in my own way. And if you if you do that once a day, imagine where your life would be in, fuck, three months. You know what I'm saying? So you can extrapolate all the rest, but I just wanted to go through that. No, okay. <laughs> no, it's perfect, man. You, and that's, but you learn how you can learn how to get there really quick. Yeah. It takes practice. So. Yeah, it's it's just practice over and over again. Uh, oh, you're fine. <laughs> and we're not gonna cut any of that out. Uh, no, like that's that's the whole thing with like with with the breathing is like like that right there. Like somebody just walked into the room. Like when you're meditating, like that's the kind of shit that will like suck you out of it. But the longer you meditate, the stronger your mind will get that you'll still like, it won't matter. You just stay right there, focused on your breathing. You'll acknowledge it and then you'll flush it back out the system. In the movie King Leonidas and the movie 300, or in these war movies, they, they have professionals that come in, psychologists and, and, and meditation gurus that say, listen, when the bombs and the rockets and bullets are flying past, literally, and people are being ripped in half in front of you, I want you to stay complete, and this is more for men, it's like a masculine awareness meditation, but you are going to stay completely focused on your mission, even though there's bullets whizzing past your head, because... If you're like, <laughs> like if you're like <laughs> trapped in the feminine, you can't get anything done or get anywhere. And I can, and I can relate to that to being trapped in my emotions is really what it means. And now you can't actually move the ball forward and move the needle forward because we're so trapped in the chaos of the moment. Trapped is the key word. When we can get all that shit ripped apart, and even when the bullets are passing and the fights and the sword, and I mean we're just executing in boom, 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 boom. That's why I look up to him so much when I talk to him because he's so good at executing. I mean, he's my coach a lot of times. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. We're just buddies. Uh, that's, you know, and so just to save time, that in its essence right there is what I think is the most difficult thing because it, it, won't, it won't matter. The, the hardest thing about starting a business is 
not being scared and just fucking do it. Like, that's that's it. That's all there is. There's no fucking huge formula. There's nothing I can go draw on the whiteboard. Like, you just have to say, okay, I'm going to take control of my life. I'm fucking doing it, and then you do it. But the hardest part about managing it, managing a business, is that. Is the bullets whizzing by your fucking head, and instead of you going, ah, I don't want to do this anymore, you go, no, bro, that's where I'm headed. Doesn't matter. Like, it's going to have to kill me. That's the only other option. It's like you either get there or you die. And that and it's a lack of commitment. That's why I think businesses fail. Either terrible planning, right? Like you just you the fucking listen, because the market is an ecosystem. It takes care of its own. Like there's a reason why 80% of businesses fail, is because they were prey. They were supposed to generate a little cash, and then all that money gets spent, and the market eats it up. You got eaten in the jungle. You didn't last. Sorry, you're a fossil now. But like managing the business. It's just not committed. You're not, oh, and I face it, right? Cause like some days I'm like, fuck this man, we're shutting this down over here and we're not doing this anymore. And I'm like, no DJ, that's not the plan. Like Patton didn't roll tanks halfway into Germany and go, fuck, they got tanks too, turn around. <laughs> like you can't do that, you gotta keep going. This is real shit. I, I <laughs> imagine that there's fog, right? You can't see anything, you're stuck, can't see the forest for the trees, right? And as long as you we stay in that, like before making or, or about to make a, a make a move right you can literally feel like you're dying you're freaking out flaking out whatever it may be and then imagine that a foot steps through that fog it just plants right on the ground that's once you take that first step now you're out of the fog and then the second step oh and then once you get going you're like i'm a fucking man yeah like you this. so you just transition from <laughs> bitch to being the man dude i'm telling you i'm i'm the dude i i totally freak out and i don't like oh i can't do it and then when i go when, when you get it doing it it becomes easy and then now all of a sudden you take credit for it i i just think that we're so subject to consciousness in this carnal body and we're so uh puppets of you know there's these roles that we're playing that I don't think we can make significant lasting progress without first identifying everything that we're talking about in learning, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I, I made a point while I was speaking uh, earlier today that you can't control anything of this world until you control your own mind. And I truly believe that. Um, we'll leave it. We'll leave it with that. Um, thanks for listening to the Sales Factory podcast. Maybe you're watching the video. If you're listening to the podcast, you can check out the full video over on my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search hashtag Coach Carroll. Um, and uh, thanks for listening. Any last words? How can they follow you oh, on social? That was awesome. I'm Keith Kalfas, K E I T H, K A L F A S. Just type me in. I pop up all over the place. <laughs> and um, he's internet famous, dog. Yeah, I would. <laughs> hey, I'm trying, man. I'm trying that's all. That's all you can do, things. man. Like that's all you. That's that's all business is. It's like just trying. I don't think anybody ever makes it. If you're truly driven for success, you never make it. Because every time you get to the level, you're just you want to go to the it's next just, level. It's just normal yeah. to you at that point. You're just so, always going after. Like it. Gary Vaynerchuk said, you're a media company first. I'm like, I won't even get into that. All right, cool. <laughs> See you guys later.